Along the golden coastline of Mexico's Pacific shore, there's a city where the sun's warmth matches the welcoming smiles of its people. It's a magnetic destination for tourists from all over the world seeking the perfect tan, good food, a vibrant nightlife, and of course, beautiful beaches. But recently this town has caught the eye and hearts of some of these visitors. People come looking for a fresh start, a change of pace, or a place to call home beyond their borders. And this place really does have a little bit of everything for everyone. So, bienvenidos a Mazatlan. Hello everyone, for those who don't know me, I am Mariana, your friend and host, and for those who've been following Mexico Relocation Guide. It's so good to have you guys back. This time we have the pleasure to show you an incredible beach town, very different from the all-time favorites like Puerto Vallarta, Playa del Carmen, or even Huatulco. This place has a unique identity that stands out from the rest. So get ready to immerse yourself in the rhythms of Mazatlan, its taste, its flavors, its heartbeat, and witness a showcase of cultures that all exist in this extraordinary city. Now, a little history on Mazatlan is that long before the arrival of Spanish explorers, Mazatlan was inhabited by indigenous groups such as the uh, Totorames and Chichimes. These early inhabitants thrived along the fertile land and bountiful coastline, and it is believed that they were semi-nomadic tribes, so they moved around. In 1531, on May 14, to be precise, a group of Spanish colonizers sent by Nuño Beltrán de Guzmán founded the village of Mazatlan, which is named after a conjunction of Nahuatl words that translates to the place of the deer. The port then got invaded and taken more than once, but probably the most famous one is in 1864 when a French ship named La Cordelier tried to disembark in Mazatlan, but it was rejected by a single piece of artillery on the shore. They shoot it away. This particular event granted the title of heroic port to the city, and it's also commemorated every year with a firework show during the carnival known as the Naval Combat. Today, the Pacific Pearl, as it is known in Mexico, has grown as a huge touristic spot, which led to the development of more resorts, hotels, attractions, and amenities that cater to visitors from around the world. This process has driven more people to think of this place as their new home rather than just a touristic resort, which turns modern-day Mazatlan into a city that embraces diversity and offers its residents a really great quality of life. Now Mazatlan has an average altitude of 140 meters above sea level, which is around 500 feet. It enjoys a tropical climate that brings pleasant weather and abundant sunshine year round. I mean, it's definitely for sun worshipers. As in most beach towns in Mexico, the seasons can be divided in two, the hot season and the not so hot season. Now kidding aside, let's look at the average temperatures and overall climate that Mazatlan offers. During the warm season, which goes from April to October, daytime temperatures range from the mid 80s to mid 90s Fahrenheit. It's perfect for beach goers and water sport enthusiasts. Humidity increases during this period and occasional short-lived showers or thunderstorms occur. The not so hot season in Mazatlan goes from November through February. And this gives you mild and pleasant temperatures. Daytime highs you typically range here between the mid 70s to low 80s. Evenings are cooler, offering a refreshing atmosphere for leisurely walks. Now this season is popular among visitors seeking a warmer escape from cold Older climates without it being too hot. Now you may be wondering how many other extranjeros or foreigners actually live in Mazatlan? Well, this city has earned a reputation as a highly expat-friendly destination. Since there's a lot of people that are from other parts of Mexico here, it actually opens up to foreigners from other parts of the world too. Now this coastal gem has cultivated a sense of community, which creates an environment where newcomers can really feel at home. And although the foreign community consists mostly of Americans and Canadian immigrants, people from various countries have established a presence in the city, which which makes for a rich tapestry of cultures, perspectives, and experiences. Solo, 
Whether you go to local markets, community events, or expat gatherings, the city's residents are quick to offer a friendly smile and an extending helping hand. In fact, that's the feedback we get all the time from people living in Mazatlan, is how friendly its people are. Compared to other cities and towns which have less touristy activity, language barriers are often minimized in Mazatlan, as many locals and service providers usually speak English. From medical professionals to restaurant staff, the willingness to assist and communicate in English is more common every day. However, don't necessarily expect a new version of Vallarta, Cancun, or Playa del Carmen because Mazatlán still retains most of its Mexican identity. The bulk of tourists consist of Mexicans and locals and mostly from the northern side of the country. Think of it as the beach destination of the northern states like Nuevo León, Durango, and then of course its own state Sonora. So with this in mind, be prepared to come with a solid amount of Spanish so you can integrate easier into the local community. And if you don't already know Espanol, then this is the perfect city to move to that'll push you to learn Spanish sooner. Now, affordability is another factor that adds to its appeal. The cost of living, including things like accommodation, utilities, and dining is notably reasonable compared to other beach towns in Mexico. Atlanta's expat-friendly nature is not limited to its beaches, its breathtaking scenery, or its affordability. It's because of the community that creates an environment that welcomes outsiders and foreigners from all walks of life. So now that you have an idea of what the vibe is like in Mazatlan, one of the most important aspects of moving to a new city is finding a place to live. This one is key. I've known people that end up moving from other towns because they couldn't find a place where they felt comfortable. To make things easier, I'm gonna divide the city into two areas, Centro and its surroundings, which is the southeast side of the city and the Zona Dorada and surroundings which would be the southwest side of the city. The central neighborhoods, again located in the southeast side of the city, are ideal if you want to spare yourself from the need of having a car. So if you're willing to walk a lot more, these are really the areas you need to focus on. These neighborhoods are mostly family-oriented, traditional Mexican neighborhoods. All of them have good services, good stores, and amenities within walking distance. The area is also near the famous Malecón, so there's also the perk of being close to the action and main attractions. Right in the centro neighborhood, which includes the historic downtown, what you find is mostly apartments. You can find some houses too, but it's probably not as common. Many of these apartments are located in what looks like really old buildings, but once you go inside, you see that they've been totally remodeled and that perfectly cover all the needs that you need for your modern life. Towards the south to Playa del Sur neighborhood, there are also several modern buildings with amenities like a community pool, 24-7 security, an expansive parking lot, and things like that, as well as bigger houses. So to give you a rough estimate in this area, we suspect that you can pay anywhere between 13,000 to 20,000 pesos for a two bedroom furnished apartment. And then you can expect to go up about 25,000 pesos for a two to three bedroom house. I know there's a big gap in that estimate, but you have to take into consideration that there are a ton of different options with different amenities. All will depend on your lifestyle, your budget, and then obviously where you look. Now, as you start going a bit west, distancing yourself a bit from downtown and the Malecón into neighborhoods like Reforma, Lomas del Mar, and Palos Prietos, just to name a few, you start seeing more houses with things like an integrated garage, backyards, and then obviously more bedrooms. The prices are very similar, but the difference is that you get a lot more space for your dollar. I mean, you could find a three plus bedroom house with a nice backyard for 20,000 pesos, and you're not really far away from the Centro or the Malecón. Now, if you move to the southwest area or the Zona Dorada and its surrounding neighborhoods such as Lomas de Mazatlán, Sábalo Country, El Encanto, Cerritos, Marina Mazatlán, and El Cid, the prices rise up a bit. You'll have more privacy, more security, high-end services, amenities, things like that, landscaping, all those kinds of things that you would imagine with a higher-end rental. In this area of town, it's easier to find gated communities and condo complexes, so you can find apartments and houses in neighborhoods like Lomas de Mazatlán and Las Gaviotas. You're gonna have similar prices to Centro, somewhere between 15,000 to 20,000 for a two bedroom apartment or house. Zona Dorada tends to be more expensive. However, here you will find more luxurious buildings and higher end apartments. So you can expect prices to start somewhere around 20,000 
to 25,000 pesos for a two bedroom apartment. Now, if you go to El Cid and El Sábalo, they have the great perk of having a golf club. So if you like golfing, this area might be for you. And while you can find a great deal, like a two bedroom apartment for about 15,000 pesos or a three bedroom house for 25,000 pesos, prices also tend to rise a bit. Considering that your backyard is a whole 18 golf course, you have to consider, you know, your lifestyle, what you want, what are your needs, what are your likes, and then obviously your budget and what you can afford. Now, another area is Marina Mazatlan. It's one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in the city for the simple fact that, well, it's a marina and you have one of the most privileged views. So here you can expect a house or a condo to average between 25,000 to 30,000 pesos a month for two to three bedrooms. Keep in mind, as always, these are rough estimates and that the city is more than this handful of neighborhoods. Even if you go further away from Centro to Northern neighborhoods, you can find great options and safe communities at very reasonable prices. Also remember that I am taking a standard two bedroom place, either a house or apartment. So when you start your own research, you'll come across more options at different prices if you're looking at smaller places. I always recommend getting in touch with a trusted and recommended real estate agent who not only knows the area really well, but can speak English and Spanish, can guide you through the entire process, help you negotiate prices. It's very common for landlords to list their prices at higher amounts since negotiation is expected. So having the right realtor can really help you to negotiate those prices for you. So what about utilities? Well, the average cost of utilities in Mazatlan is actually pretty reasonable. Unless you're really used to living without air conditioning on a beach town that has very humid and hot weather, let's just assume you're gonna have air conditioning. So let's start with that one, electricity. The only provider in Mexico is the CFE, CFE. And the norm is to receive a bill every two months. A real estimated average would be somewhere around 2,500 to 4,500 pesos every two months. Now for reference, we're gonna imagine that these estimates represent the average norm for a two bedroom apartment with a couple living in it. Water and sewage services in Mazatlan are also reasonably priced. On average, monthly water bills for a standard household can range approximately between 150 to 300 pesos. Now, monthly natural gas bills for an average household can range approximately between 350 to 500 pesos. And in case gas is not actually a bill, but rather a switch or refill of your gas tank, then just keep in mind that that might fluctuate. Some houses have a fixed tank that only need to be refilled. Most houses will have a gas tank that you need to call a company and then they will come and replace it for you. You should ask your landlord which kind of tank your unit has and also which provider is the best one for that location. Some of the common ones are Gas Nieto and Sony Gas. Both are major providers in several states. Now, internet, obviously one of the most important utilities that we all think about, is available by three major telecom companies in Mexico. They are Telmex, Izzy, and Total Play. All three companies offer fiber optic internet up to one gigabyte speed for about 1,500 to 1,800 pesos a month. That's for the fastest package. Now, if you don't need that much speed, the most basic package starts at a reasonable 360 pesos a month. My personal recommendation is Total Play. However, they don't always have fiber optic in all areas of the city. So consult their availability before signing up with them. If you don't want to be subject to availability of fiber optic, you could always opt for satellite internet provided by Starlink. However, keep in mind that if you don't live in a house with a good rooftop access or a very clear satellite view, you won't get really good coverage. Keep in mind that because the Mexican peso tends to fluctuate, it seems like almost daily now, you should really try to consider to stay at the lower end of your budget when it comes to housing. Because it fluctuates so much, it would be a shame for you to be strapped for paying other things in your monthly expenses if your rental is too expensive. So something for you to consider that you should always keep that in mind. If you wanna know how to find out the most current peso amount, I really recommend a site like xe.com. I'll include a link in the bottom. The biggest expense that you will have will likely be your rent in case you're renting a house. If you're buying a house, property taxes in Mexico are very, very low. 
And you may notice that rent prices do seem to increase every year, which is pretty common on these beach towns, especially when they start getting international attention. Now, don't let this discourage you. I really encourage you to start doing your research and try to find someone who can help you find all the good deals. You'll see that you'll be able to find something that accommodates your needs and your budget, but it's all about knowing the right people and knowing where to look. It's also important for you to do your due diligence and find out what is the actual going rate for a rental in the that size in that neighborhood and with those amenities. That way you don't accidentally get gringo priced. Now real quick before we get on to the next part of the video. So where are you watching us from? I'd love to know in the comments below. And remember that if you give this video a like, it helps our YouTube algorithm stay relevant and it helps you get video recommendations just like this one. Now don't forget to sign up for the free living in Mexico guide. It's recently updated. I've included a lot more information that can help you do some preliminary research on what it's like to actually live in Mexico. The link for the free guide is in the comments down below. All right, now let's get into shopping. Buying in local markets is a trait that is still very much embedded into our Mexican culture. And we have found that it has many benefits, not only because of the fact that you are directly contributing to the economy of the small local producers, but also you get to save some money because you get the freshest produce at the best price compared to big supermarkets. In Mazatlan, you have several options of local markets where you can get most of the groceries in one place. So let's take a look at them. We visited two markets that are located within Centro. The first one is Mercado Pino Suarez, which is at the heart of downtown and it's been operating since 1900. So you could say this is a main market. It's a busy market where you can find fresh fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy, some canned goods, household goods, souvenirs, handcrafts, clothing, seeds, and the list goes on. On the second floor, you'll find a food court where you can get a full meal for as little as 90 pesos, which in today's exchange rate is about six US dollars for a very well-served meal. And we also went to Mercado Juan Carrasco, which is just a few blocks away from the Malecón. It's a bit smaller, but still offers a great diversity of products, similar to Pino Suarez, just with fewer vendors. There are at least four other local markets similar to these two in the city. One of them is the Lopez Mateos Market, the Miguel Hidalgo Market, which which is also known as Juarez Market, the Flores Magón, and La Central de Abastos. All of these markets offer pretty much the same types of goods. Now, besides these markets where you have all these different products in one place, every neighborhood has an array of small stores that sell pretty much the same products, but have an independent space and then obviously a markup. These will be cremerias for cheese and dairy, carnicerias, which are butcher shops, frutas y verduras, which are fruit and vegetable stands, and tienda de abarrotes, which are general stores where you can get basic kitchen and household products and snacks. Just a footnote and tip that will help you if you adopt into the buying local culture. You'll notice that these products have a shorter lifespan. I mean, sometimes fruits and vegetables go bad faster than what you're used to if you buy it at the big box supermarkets. And that's because most of the products and ingredients you find in these markets are less modified, contain fewer chemicals and steroids. Although we couldn't say they are 100% organic, however, they definitely contain a drastically less amount of chemicals. And that's why I emphasize size that you get not only a better quality of products when buying in this market, but a far more affordable price. Plus, remember, you're making somebody's small store or small business a little bit better. And if you're ready to embrace it and contribute to the local economy and preserve the native way of life, this is a good way to start. Also, try to make friends with the vendors. A smile and a buenos dias will get you a long way. Trust me, I do understand missing some brands or products from back home that you just won't find in these local markets. So don't worry, as a thriving touristic and diverse city, supermarkets are fairly abundant in Mazatlán. You have all the Mexican classics like Soriana, Mega Comercial, and Bodega Herrera, which mostly sells national products, but now you can find a nice option of international products. Then you have several others like Walmart, Sam's Club, which is near the Golden Zone. And then you have smaller local supermarkets or mini mercados that also provide a good variety of products. You also have other stores that aren't necessarily food related like the Home Depot and Office Depot, as well as a lot of other local hardware stores all over the city. Now, if you're wondering what kind of malls are, are available, well, there's a few malls in the city where besides groceries, you can do some shopping at some international stores. You have places like La Gran Plaza and 
Galerías Mazatlán, which stand out as the biggest malls in the area with a great amount of stores, a movie theater, food court, kids area, and everything a big city has to offer. In these malls, it would be easy to find department stores where you can get some home appliances. There are several other little malls or strip malls scattered all around the city where you can find all kinds of stores from organic markets, hardware stores, gift stores, restaurants, and everything in between. These are very convenient if you don't live close to the malls mentioned or if you don't have a car. Mazatlan offers a comprehensive range of medical services that ensure that if you're living here, you'll have access to quality healthcare. The city boasts several reputable hospitals, clinics, and medical facilities that provide a variety of medical treatments and services. The city is dotted with pharmacies all over the place that offer prescription medications, over-the-counter drugs, and medical supplies. Many pharmacies or farmacias offer consultation services or a quick visit, making it convenient for residents to manage minor illnesses. It's kind of known as doc in the box, known by most expats. And these are usually found in local pharmacies, such as Farmacias Similares and Farmacias del Ahorro. But if you need something a little bit more specialized, then Mazatlan is home to several modern hospitals and medical centers equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and staffed by skilled medical professionals. These institutions offer a wide spectrum of healthcare services, including things like emergency care, surgery, diagnostic services, and specialized treatment. The medical staff usually includes English-speaking doctors and specialists, ensuring that you can communicate as both a local or as an immigrant. To mention a few hospitals and clinics, there's the Mazatlan General Hospital, which is managed by the state, and the Margarita Maza de Juarez Hospital, managed by the municipality. Since they are government managed, most likely you'll have to be affiliated with the IMSS, which is the social security institution in Mexico. This provides healthcare. If you haven't paid taxes into it, you can pay your premium uh, once a year, depending on your age. Now, once you become a temporary resident, you'll be able to sign up yourself, even if you don't work for a Mexican company. If you'd rather go on the private side, you have even better hospitals, Hospital Sharp Mazatlan, Hospital Marina, and Hospital Alma Medical Center, just to name a few. Remember, as I always say, it's better to prevent than to react. So keep yourself moving, start a new life in a new city, which should come with new habits, such as walking a little more, eating healthier, and just an apple a day. Remember, it keeps the doctor away. All right, so are you ready to move to Mazatlan? Well, you need to figure out how to get around. Now, to get to Mazatlan, you can choose to do it by driving, by flying, or even by sea, as many cruise ships actually dock in Mazatlan. But probably the most common way that most of you will be arriving is by taking a plane. Mazatlan does have an international airport that offers direct flights to some cities in the United States as well as Canada. From there, you can fly to several major cities in Mexico, such as Mexico City, Monterrey, Tijuana, and some others. There's also a bus station, which is just a few blocks from the Malecón, which has several major bus lines like ETN, Primera Plus, Omnibus, and the like. Now, once you're in Mazatlan, you have several options to move around. My first suggestion is always gonna be to walk. Mazatlan is really not a big city. It is growing, but if you're able to live in a neighborhood that has pretty much all the amenities you can need within walking distance, then you should only need to walk short walking distances. In any case, if walking down the tropical sun of Mazatlan is not your cup of tea, then you can definitely own a car. It does have good streets, it's well connected, and it's easy to get around. If you don't have a car, yet, then Mazatlan does have an extensive bus network, which is popular with locals. With multiple routes covering key areas, city buses offer an efficient way and cost-effective for you to move around the city. A typical fare starts at 11 pesos for a one-way ticket, making it a really economical choice to get around. But you might prefer a private ride. So for this, I do recommend a taxi, and you can find taxis all around the city. You normally hail them on the street, and they should charge you somewhere between 70 to 80 pesos per ride within the city limits. Now, sometimes the fare rises late at night, depending on, you know, whether it's a touristy weekend or if something else is going on in town. Uber does operate in the city. However, the fares are similar to local taxis, and there is a small gap of a few pesos between one or the other. Also, keep in mind that Uber does tend sometimes to cancel their fares, so they can sometimes 
always be unreliable. I really do prefer taxis. Mazatlan offers another form of public transportation that is very unique to Mazatlan and that is a pulmonia, which is now an icon of the city. These are very cute, modified VW Beetles that are open air, taxi rides, and are thought for, you know, tourists because you get to watch the ocean, you get to be open air, so you get to get the breeze. However, some people do complain that they play really, really loud music. So just keep in mind that this may be more of a party ride than, you know, a leisurely ride. You can always ask the driver to turn the music down. The other concept that is for bigger groups are called aurigas, and these can hold up to 10 people. These are big pickup trucks, also modified to offer a comfortable ride in the back of the truck. The fare on these two is negotiable, but you can expect to start a price for pulmonia would be 150 pesos, more or less, and about 500 pesos for an auriga. Now, another interesting transportation option in Mazatlan or in La Paz, Baja California Sur, and you want to take your car with you or your household belongings and or pets, there is a ferry that takes you from Mazatlan to La Paz or vice versa. The ferry leaves Mazatlan on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays and has a travel time of about 14 to 16 hours. It's a good option if you're moving from Mazatlan to La Paz or vice versa. Fares start at 1,650 pesos per person and up to 2,000 pesos per person for a private room with a bed on board. This does include meals and it does include uh, drinks, but just keep in mind that the meals and drinks are very basic. The fares for cars start at around 5,800 pesos or about 3,300 pesos for a motorcycle, plus any additional fees for extra luggage and or pets. Even though it is a lengthy trip or lengthy transportation option to get to Mazatlan or go to La Paz, it is a, a good option for people who are either wanting to take their car or maybe people who can't fly with pets. So I'll include a link for the ferries website in the comments down below. What kind of things are there to do in Mazatlan if you were going to be living here? Well, the busiest areas in town are, of course, the historic downtown and the Malecon. And you can just have a casual walk around any one of these iconic areas, and it's enough to call it a fun day. And you fill yourself with energy of Mazatlan streets, it has colorful scenery, enjoy some of the culinary delights, and immerse yourself in its lively and vibrant culture. In the historic downtown, you also can enjoy some local museums and monuments that can help you to understand understand the history of Mazatlan, like the Archaeology Museum or the Art Museum of Mazatlan. Both are right in front of each other, and these are located in old manors with beautiful architecture. They also offer a rich and pleasant tour through the pre-Hispanic history of Mazatlan and through the local artistic scene. Now right at the heart of the historic downtown, there's the famous Plazuela Machado, which is a typical picturesque main square with a kiosk right in the middle and several restaurants surrounding it. During the weekend nights, a street market takes over this square and some of the streets, local artisans come here to sell their crafts. It's a great option if you're just looking to go out and do some people watching or maybe just have a peaceful and pleasant walk. These areas are also filled with tons of options for foodies. A pro traveler trip, if you truly want to taste the local flavors and have an authentic gastronomic experience, stay away from the touristic restaurants, which are normally the ones surrounding the main square as well as the malecon. This leads me to the next topic, and that is food. Now, I'm not saying all restaurants on the Malecon and the historic downtown are not good. There are definitely some solid options. However, in my opinion, if you want to truly taste Mazatlan's true gastronomy, then you need to seriously take a look and tour all the food trucks. There's so many of them. Some locals call these carretas. So if you hear mariscos de carreta, it means delicious street food or seafood from a street cart. Logically, the base of the, the food in Mazatlan is fish. And and everything that comes from the sea because this is a coastal town. Now you'll find dishes like aguachile, ceviche, shrimp in all kinds of presentations, fish tacos, empanadas de marlin, fresh or grilled octopus, which is one of my favorite. Those are just a few popular dishes that you can find in several of these restaurants. It's just a matter of choosing which ones are better for you and trust me, it'll be a tough choice. Not everything is seafood, so don't worry if you can't stand seafood. Remember that you're still in Northern Mexico, meaning that there's great steak. Here, you'll find tacos de asada, which is beef tacos, as well as cecina, 
which is a dried meat that's kind of salty, resemblance of some kind of ham or prosciutto. Northern states in Mexico stand out for the quality of the meat, so you can be sure that most tacos are delicious in the state of Sinaloa. And of course, you have several other restaurants serving all kinds of different international cuisines. You have Italian, Japanese, Chinese, Thai, there's small breweries in town, lots of pizza joints, sushi bars, I mean, you name it. Mazatlan has basically everything that you can need or want if you're a foodie. You will have a blast in every place that you want to eat. Now, you may not know this, or you might, but if you're into bars, cantinas, nightclubs, you know, the party lifestyle, then Mazatlan is the place for you. Many people actually perceive Mazatlan as a party town. And while it's true that the pace of life is calmer and you can have a very quiet and peaceful lifestyle here, it's also true that this city stands out for its vibrant nightlife. I would say the top areas for some nighttime fun are the historic downtown, Olas Altas, and the Zona Dorada. In any of these areas, you'll find a plethora of bars, nightclubs, cantinas, dance halls, live music venues, and everything you would want to have a great time. The best part is that nightlife in Mazatlan caters for every type of personality and every budget. So it's not super expensive to have a night out. The same as you can find bars where you pay 25 pesos for a beer, you can also have a great time and have a high-end place where you can enjoy live music, wonderful views of the coastline, and excellent service. It's really up to you, but nighttime in Mazatlan is definitely a great experience. If you're more into submerging into the local culture and traditions of the town, there there are several festivals and fairs that take place every year. We must mention the Mazatlan Carnival, which takes place every year during the first weeks of February. And the carnival brings a number of events and artists from all over the country, as well as parades and a wonderful showcase of Mazatlan's lively and colorful culture. Other worthy mentions of this are the Spring Festival, which as the name suggests runs from March through July. And it brings a lot of international artists, orchestras, dance companies, which perform in a different venue throughout the city. There are also another festival, which is a cultural festival of Mazatlan, closing the year with spectacular performances from national and international artists, as well as several expos in some of the city's museums and landmarks. There's also a book fair, film festival, several foodie fairs, music festivals, concerts, theater, and the overall culture and artistic offering in Mazatlan is solid and diverse. So even if you don't end up living in Mazatlan, I think it's a great city to come and visit if you want to go to Carnaval or you want to go to one of the many concerts that the city has or just to take in the beach and then enjoy its nightlife. I think it's a really great city. If you are more of a nature lover like me, then you prefer the peace and quietness of the beach or a hiking trail. Well, Mazatlan has something for you. Of course, we need to start with the beaches. Mazatlan has at least 15 beaches along its coastline. All of them are public access. Now to mention a few, we can start with Olas Altas. Then there's also Cerritos, Las Gaviotas, and Sábalo. Now these are just a few of Mazatlán's beaches, which are beautiful and each one has its own unique character. So you'll have plenty of options for a nice beach day. Living here will never get boring. Now if you're into enjoying nature while being a bit more active, there are also plenty of options. There's a few hiking trails in some areas of the city. Probably the most visited one is El Faro, which is an iconic landmark of Mazatlán since it's a lighthouse that dates back from the 19th century. And it's one of the tallest in the world. To get to the lighthouse, you need to walk up a 30 minute trail, more or less. It's a nice walk and it's totally worth it since you get the most spectacular panoramic view of the ocean and the city. Now further south and near the Stone Island, you have El Cerro de los Chivos, which is another hiking area, which is perfect for beginners and people who are pretty advanced. At your arrival to the Malecon, you won't miss the big three islands that are just a few meters away from the shore. These are known as Isla de Pájaros, Isla de Venados, and Isla de los Chivos. These islands are actually natural reserves and you can only access them by boat. They have a host of endemic species of plants as well as birds and sea creatures. Isla de Venados is the most visited one since it has few virgin beaches as well as a nice hiking trail. Isla de Chivos is more visited for snorkeling, diving, and eating in one of its palapas. Another famous island is Isla de la Piedra, which I mentioned before. The island also has some bars, nightclubs, and restaurants as well as its pristine beaches with calm waves, perfect for relaxing. Now you can access this island by boat, which is the most common and effective way, or 
by road. If you're more curious about how life in Mexico is, don't forget to get our free living in Mexico guide. Again, it's been recently updated with a lot of really good information to help you do your research on what it's truly like to live in Mexico. The link for the free guide is in the comments down below. Mazatlan was a blast for us. So how was it for you? What do you think of Mazatlan? Would you consider this city to start a new life? What other cities would you like to see on our channel? Leave me your comments and let me know down below. So it's always so hard for me to say goodbye, but this isn't really a goodbye. It's only an hasta pronto, which means we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching Mexico Relocation Guide, and I will see you guys in our next video. Nos vemos!